Hey, West Village Church, Andrew and Chris here. We have been walking through a sermon series called Collision of Kingdoms in which we're talking about the relationship of faith and politics. And we've been answering some of your questions over the past week. So our question for today is, should Christians form political lobbies to protect their rights of freedom of religion and freedom of conscience and strategically vote for leaders who promote pro-freedom of conscience and pro-freedom of religious positions? Uh, what do you think, Chris? Well, wh- why don't you just maybe quickly just tease that out a little bit yeah, for somebody for sure. so they can maybe just fully yeah, grasp what so, the question's asking. So uh, the charter rights in Canada uh, are set that we have freedom of religion and freedom of conscience, which means we shouldn't be forced to um, we shouldn't be forced to do something that is against our conscience. So, for example, this one has come up a lot, probably like more recently. Uh, but uh, say you're a doctor and someone wants to have an assisted, um, they want assistance in dying, and you feel like, oh no, I'm that actually violates my conscience and my belief that life is sacred, and I can't be part of that. Well, should you, as a doctor in a professional position, be forced to say, no, you still have to refer or you still have to perform? Um, or, and freedom of, of religion would be, you know, that we have protections to believe whatever it is that we want to believe, uh, whether you're Christian or Muslim or Hindu, no matter how far out it is that you can, in, in any sense, like hold to that belief system. Yeah, so I, I, I think the answer is yes. I think, well, uh, let, let me tease this answer out a little bit. I think, yes, we should desire that. We should desire that we would live in a land that is free, right? Um, I, I think that, But that idea of freedom is actually uh, rooted in a Christian worldview. I mean, the the reality of the, you know, the society of like Western society kind of, it's the, it's grown up in the garden of the Christian worldview. And so I think these are uniquely, um, uniquely Christian ideas. Now, I I think they've kind of been hijacked by secularism as of late, but if you go to other parts of the world uh, where, where Christianity was not a part of um, forming that society, you're going to see a very different lived reality <laughs> yes. where where it's sort of um, you know top down. You, you know, you're going to have communism. You're going to have um, religious states that basically force groupthink upon you, and you don't really get a lot of say in how you live. And so, I would say yes. I think we we as Christians are going to want to fight for the rights, not just our own rights, which I think is sometimes the trap we can fall into. We're worried about our own rights, but we want to fight for the rights of all people to have freedom of conscience. And I actually think in that environment, that arena, that's where the the, the Christian gospel is going to flourish the most. Um, And so, yes, now to get to the specifics of, um, you know, should Christians form political lobbies? um, Again, I would say yes. I think it's good because I I believe that this idea of, of freedom of religion, freedom of conscience, just kind of personal freedom in general, uh, I think it actually produces the maximum amount of human flourishing, independent of Christianity, but just in general, it produces the maximum human flourishing. It's why people want to come and live here. It's why people want to want to move from other countries to be here because we have that kind of culture here. So yes, I think for the sake of loving our neighbor, for the sake of loving our country, that these are the things that we should then per, uh, pursue. But I would add to that, as you know, with just about any political position, we have to be so um, mindful, not just of what we believe, but of how we believe it. Not just what positions we hold, but how we hold them. So I think when we enter into this, when we lobby, um, again, it's just this sense that we serve a God who gave up his rights. Now that doesn't mean we are being told that we have to give up our political rights. It just means there's a humility that is baked into the equation for us in how we actually operate. Yeah, I think sometimes we can come at it with sort of a sense of entitlement. Right. um, And and that just honestly doesn't look good. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And at the same time, there are times when other people's rights uh, rights are being violated. Like I think of uh, Bill, I think 21 in in Quebec, where, you know, there's people who are religious minorities who are being told like, hey, you can't teach because you wear like a headdress or something like that. And I think we as Christians, uh, you know, when it, it doesn't violate our own kind of uh, moral conscience, should be like vocal and standing up to governments and saying, hey, you can't, like, not only do we not want, as you, as you said, not only do we not want our, you know, freedom of religion and freedom of conscience violated, but you shouldn't be violating someone else's. Like, if, if, if this is something that uh, they feel like they should be doing, 
uh, of course, like we, you know, we want to love that person. We want to see them come to know Jesus, recognize that they can have freedom in Him, all that kind of stuff. But they should have the right, and we should be willing to lay down our lives to fight for them to have that right. Yeah, that's good.